recruiter screen, I, I think it's about being yourself. You're either going to be a good fit or you're not. As long as you meet most of the criteria, they screen you for, for are you going to fit within this company? And do you actually know what you're talking about on a surface level? Hey, I'm Karina. And I'm Taylor. And this is Direct, a podcast we created to showcase the creativity and hard work of good market teams everywhere. We're here to share the stories and experiences of the hardworking, passionate individuals who make up go-to-market teams, the ones who truly make the magic happen. Taylor and I have been fortunate enough to work side by side on some incredible projects together. And now we want to put a spotlight on the unsung heroes behind some of the best go-to-market campaigns out there. In each episode, you'll hear from individual contributors who have gone above and beyond to make a difference. They'll share their challenges, victories, and the lessons they've learned along the way all to help you unlock the next step in your career. Get ready to be inspired, learn something new, maybe even share a laugh or two. Welcome to Direct. Welcome back to another episode of Direct with Karina and Taylor. I'm Taylor. And I'm Karina. And today we're joined by Jolie Shapiro. She's a B2B marketer and fellow podcast host who has honed her skills at companies like Sixth Sense, Onclusive, and American Express. Outside of the office, she enjoys shooting hoops, snowboarding, hiking, and writing songs. Jolie, how long have you been writing songs? Since I was 11 years old. Mm, well, I love that. What got you passionate about writing songs? They just started popping into my head randomly Aww. when I was 11. But lyrics and melodies, so the actual instrument I'm not that great at but with the lyrics and melodies I can I can pretty much read anything that is an incredible talent one that skipped me my I've come from a very musical family and it completely skipped my generation but we won't go there um <laughs> Jolie we always start the show with one question I've got my magic wand here to ask you if you had a magic wand and you could change anything about your career your personal life the job market anything like that, what would you wave your magic wand and do? I thought about it. I actually thought about this question because I thank you for prepping me. So I thought about it, I think, to make it, to make the job hunt a little bit easier on everyone. And I had LinkedIn post, a lot of people reached out and I had about 10 calls with different people and uh, just to give them some guidance and how hard it was for everyone, which is heartbreaking. Some people weren't even making it past the f like they weren't even getting interviews, just a recruiter screen. So I'd love to, if I could wave a magic wand, I'd love for everyone just to have an easier time right now because it's a really tough job market. I think that's super empathetic of you. And it really is a really unique time. We actually, your episode is probably going to be released right after um, an episode we have with Sue Keith and she's actually a recruiter. So it's perfectly timed to have you on. Her perspective was giving our, our audience what it was like for, you know, how it is to screen all these applications and her recommendations and tips for them. So I think the other side of the coin here is going to be great. And Julie, we're so happy to have you on because you do have a really, you know, interesting approach to how you've put yourself out there in the market. And not only to your point, landed all those interviews past the resume screening, but you actually got quite a few offers as well. To kick us off here, can you give our listeners just kind of a, an overview of your approach to how you started to multi-thread at these different organizations you were applying for? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I definitely <laughs> multi-threaded. Uh, so, <laughs> so I did a few different approaches. So I used LinkedIn, Ladders, and Indeed. And I also just found this nifty tool called Enhancive. I actually just emailed people that I, that I was talking to. It's E-N-H-A-N-C-V. And what it does is it's the page description, but it's not that much, but it, and it tailors your resume to the job description. So it'll do an ATS check and then it'll also write a summary for you. And then it'll also do a cover letter. So that's really been helpful. So that's one. I also posted my resume on different recruiting sites. So I reached out to all the recruiters that I've ever worked with. That was like about 4,000. I went through about 4,000 emails. Wow. I didn't reach out to 4,000 people, but I went through 4,000. I went through 4,000 emails. It was a lot, but actually got a final, I got a final round out of that outreach. So cold outreach, well, kind of warm, but cold. So that 
the enhancive applying through Indeed letters and LinkedIn. I'm kind of, people have suggested to message a hiring manager. I've done it for the ones I really want, like the jobs that I'm like, this would be my dream job. Like I write a custom, I write a custom note and I also leverage my community. So I'm part of Forge X, I'm part of Club PS, Pavilion, and my own community Mensal. And I really leaned on my communities and got a few interviews that way too. So I, I did a bunch of different, <laughs> bunch of different tactics that, that worked. I mean, I got a ton of rejections. Don't get me wrong. Like there were a lot of rejections, but it, it definitely even helped even the playing field. Well, I love that you're sharing that, you know, you did, of course, experience some hardship there too, but you have this really great data set to look at, right? So it's not like we're just talking about one-offs. You you have, to your point, you looked over like 4,000 emails alone. So you definitely sent out hundreds, I'm assuming, of cold outreach. What would you attribute to your cold outreach being so successful? Because obviously that's even hard for sellers, right? That are employed. So what would you say was something that you really found to be really successful in these cold outreaches? Yeah, so I connected or I emailed people that had previously had job openings. So companies that previously had job openings I emailed. So I was already in touch with the internal recruiter. And if they weren't there anymore, because some of these were like three years ago, um, they referred me to someone else. And then I also, a lot of them are reconnected with recruiters that I worked with in the past. So they were already, quote unquote, as they say in ABM, like a warm lead because I'd already worked with them in the past. So it was, I think this made it so successful is that I already, I replied within that thread. I didn't start a new thread. Mm-hmm. Even if it was three years ago, I replied within that email. So they had context to what I was talking about. I think that's a super smart tactical tip, actually, that we haven't heard yet. And it was actually something we didn't discuss on the previous podcast episode with the recruiter, that you don't necessarily have to have your whole network on LinkedIn or communities even. You can just go through your inbox over the last decade Mm -hmm. or so and look at jobs you just previously applied to. And that's going to avoid so many spam filters by doing that automatic reply on the thread versus starting a whole new conversation. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. um, It landed me definitely a few interviews. So it was it was good. So from our conversations earlier and what you had referenced that LinkedIn post, you had a a lot of very fantastic numbers in there um, to talk about how many interviews you did actually get and how far those did for our audience. Would you uh, give us a little bit of a recap of what that looked like for you? I I believe you said almost 90 to 95 percent, unfortunately, were just went no response, but of the 10, 5 to 10% that did, you had a really great way of grabbing the attention from the, yeah, from the brand that you cared about the most. Could you speak to a little bit about those response rates that you did receive and how you ensured movement in the ones that actually did respond? Oh, yeah. So how I, (laughs) it's funny, how I, and I think I probably referenced this in my job post, I approach job hunting like ABM. So, and like, like a sales prospector, like a, like you are your own personal brand. So let's say the enhancer gets me to the first round um, or teal or, you know, insert tool here. So I research about 30 minutes before every recruiter screen. So I'll look at the job description and the company. Cause they'll say, why are you interested in this role in this company? That's one of the first questions I ask, cause they're trying to see if you actually did your homework. So I'll do that. Recruiter screen, I I think it's about being yourself. You're either going to be a good fit or you're not. As long as you meet most of the criteria, they screen you for, for, are you going to fit within this company? And do you actually know what you're talking about on a surface level? So that's, that's the first round. And then as you get deeper and deeper into conversations, especially panels, you really, what I, what I did is a lot of, I think, wrote on LinkedIn as well, the chat GPT prompts of, of please give me questions, commonly asked questions by this type of role for this type of role for this company. And chat GPT4 has access to Bing, as you guys know. So it'll, it'll give it to you and it'll give you, it'll access Glassdoor. So you can prep what kind of questions are actually going to ask. And then for a lot of assessments there. I did a lot of assessments. 
uh, and, pre and presentations throughout my interviewing. So that was like presentation slash assessments. So I did, I would do beautiful.ai. I highly recommend it. You guys might've heard of it. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. You put all your inputs in there and it creates a slide deck for you. In, oh my God. The, wow. And in, in like minutes and it's not perfect. Like you do definitely have to, but you can actually do an AI prompt. And, be, and so you have all the text you, you train that you, it's called train the eye with the text. So you have all your text that you want in there and then you can put an AI prompt, like, please only use icons or only use images or, you know, whatever prompt you want or create a mark, use this text below to reference and create a marketing plan, something like that. So that's what I use for that. And then something that I think you said, Karina, I don't know if you posted it or something else, but something that I didn't ask in the final interview, I think it was. What can I qualify to enable me to get the offer or enable me to get the next round? Or I think that was you, but I'm, I recommend that question to everyone because I, I still have nightmares about it. Oh. <laughs> but I didn't ask that question. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I could take credit. I, def I definitely do recommend it. And I have for a while to ask that, but I'm curious. I want to pull on that thread a little bit. Why, why are you kicking yourself for not asking that question? What do you think it would have changed? Well, because in the final round, the person, the CMO didn't pick either candidate. And the reason, so they went through two rounds of candidates, of two final candidates, didn't pick any of us, which is fine. But I think the difference it would have made is that the feedback I got from the recruiter of the 4,000 emails that I sent, <laughs> where I got the final round, or for 4,000, 4,000 emails that I went through, was she said, Julie's great but it seems like she lacks execution when in fact that's actually what I'm best at. So if I asked that question, I could have qualified or clarified my execution strategies and I probably could have landed the job. So that's, that's why I'm shooting myself the book. I, I think that's really good perspective. And I mean, I'm curious, like when we don't have to spend too much more time on it, but did you go back and end up kind of re-clarifying to that recruiter or hiring manager? Oh, I wrote her an email. Okay. How did that <laughs> land? Uh, no response, but you know what? Oh, okay. I, I feel good about it. Good. I, good. Did, I did everything in my power to end on a good note. Well, I mean, I, I've been hiring manager before, so has Taylor. I, I definitely think that that would have resonated with me, that you took the time to still be interested and curious, even without getting the offer initially. So, I mean, kudos to you for that. I think the tenacity, that would have really showed through for me. Thanks. So you're talking a lot, and when, when you're talking a lot about like the difference between AI, automation, and then just coming through with the human aspect, like being yourself, I often try to go to like the 80-20 rule where 80% of the results are coming from 20% of the effort. Is taking that rule into account, what would you say or what would you recommend to candidates as far as like how, where should they put the most of their time when it comes to automation, AI, and where should they spend most of their time being like, super personalized and human centric? Great question. I think AI for the resumes and cover letters, because you're applying to so many jobs. I mean, I think I've applied to hundreds, if not a couple thousand at this point. And it is tedious. It is exhausting. I feel for everyone out there, <laughs> including myself. So AI for the, re with like, like the, thing I recommended that enhancive, I think is a really great tool to just, it takes a 20 minute process, 20, 30 minute process and cuts it down to five. And then for the presentation, since in a lot of revenue rules, you have to give as you have to do case studies and presentations and assessments, that beautiful dot AI tool that I recommend that I think is great. That does it in minutes versus doing a PowerPoint that can take two hours. And so I think the kind of like the the crux of the quote unquote, I guess if you think about it in revenue, like that top of funnel, that top of funnel outreach is more is more AI generated. And then it can also help you prep for interviews. But you really wanna, I think where it becomes personalized is you really wanna know chat GPT, I think only goes up to like town 22. So you really wanna know who the company is who you're talking to, 
what are their likes? What are their dislikes? Like really treat it like an account. <laughs> you're, I mean, you're, you're treating these companies like an account. So the further along you go to really assess, is this for me? Like, for example, like I've, a couple offers or interviews or, you know, whatever the case may be, I looked at Glassdoor and even though it's a great company, their Glassdoor reviews were like a 2.9. So use that. And I think where you're yourself as you draw upon your experience, you're not, you're not going to, chat GPT can't save you. It's not going to give you the perfect answer. It's not going to, it gives you like maybe 50% of what you need to say. But I think it's, it's like just digging deep and like, I can, I can do this. And I think that, I think for, even if you don't feel confident to project that confidence, like fake until you make kind of thing and really because you know what you're talking about. You really do. And maybe even taking a second to pause. You don't have to answer the, you don't have to just like blurt the first thing that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> you can take a second and digest the question or even have them ask it again in a different way. And you, and you can nail it. Yeah. I really appreciate that you called that last part out. Like I think the AI tools are so incredibly helpful in scale and preparation when you also back that up with like, obviously, you know what you're talking about and pe hiring managers will see through it if you don't necessarily, but you absolutely, as long as you have that backup, it's a great way to scale. And I love the juxtaposition you've created throughout this conversation to ABM. It sounded to me a lot like a one to many, one to few, and a one to one exactly. approach that exactly. you are taking. And of course, Karine and I being ABMers know that traditionally you're looking at ICP and you're looking at maybe intent or engagement signals to kind of decide who goes in which buckets. Could you speak to how you decided which companies would be put in each of those buckets and how much time you were willing to spend on one maybe than another? Yeah, so it's funny. I I really, I start twitching when I have to log in to, to an application. <laughs> That's just a side note, but um, in terms of, but I, I will do it. Uh, but in terms of, I, I think it's funny. I got really good advice from my friend the other day because I was, I was, you know, kind of down about the job hunt and, and all that, you know, I'm, I'm consulting at the moment, but, but it's it, like I mentioned, it's a tough job market out there. And she said, be intentional, enjoy the time you have off because you won't have it again, or you might, but you know, not for long. Enjoy the time off and really be intentional with your with your who you want to where you want to be what you want to do next. So I've been targeting healthcare companies because I'm really into mental health. I've been targeting agencies. I love I love consulting and having conversations and strategizing. Also being tactical in the music industry to get back into music. So I have my I have my verticals as they say, and and I've been messaging i've been just doing like she said just do coffee chats like just do an informational interview about how to get into these industries that are really hard to break into because everyone not everyone but a lot of people have passion for music and healthcare, and it's really competitive it's one thing to beat out 300 applicants for warner which i did it's another thing to beat out five thousand applicants for a marketing assistant job at warner so it's just you know it's about targeting the right the right person like for example I applied for a mental health care company and then I, and then I DM the hiring manager and he said, Hey, thanks so much for reaching out. I'll let the, I'll let the team know that you applied. Honestly, we're looking for a person with this type of experience, but I'll still let them know. So just that intentional targeting with what you really yeah. want to do. Cause at the end of the day, we all want to be passionate about what we do. It, it's very it's rare sometimes, but to at least get behind the product. I can feel that very much because I love, you know, marketing to marketers because I'm so mm -hmm. passionate about marketing when my buyer or these marketers, you get to be so creative and have so much fun with it. So definitely resonate with that. I heard a little bit of the commentary as well about the multi-threading and understanding who you're talking to. Do you have any advice to people who are coming into maybe second or third round interviews? how to understand more about who they're talking to and what how they should be prepared differently than in an original first round interview? Yeah, definitely. So I, I think it's about looking through LinkedIn and finding commonalities, even mutual connections, and also looking at company news. I think knowing 
like for example i think for one of my final rounds i did uh, i just typed in you know the company name from in google in google news and it pop, it had a bunch of stuff it had their acquisitions it had i'm trying to think what else it had just general just general news and i was actually able to frame my questions around that an example would be how do you feel that this acquisition affects your scale or you know it could be it, it that wasn't the exact question but you guys get what i'm getting at i think that's really helpful and a good distinction again it's kind of like taylor was saying before and you've, you've cooperated with too is that you're taking it from like tier one to tier two to tier three with the different types of tactics that you would do i'm almost wondering like do you feel like today you have a playbook for any stage of you know part of the process of the the interview experience and do you feel like it's something that could be applied across any type of industry and any type of role? I think so. If I put pen to paper, I could probably write it out, but it, it might take some time <laughs> to do an ABM approach for a job hunt. But I, I believe I do. I can kind of speak to it. So tier one, the one to many is where you use AI with the tools that I mentioned. The one to few is where you DM or email. You can use Apollo actually for this, where you can get the direct emails for the hiring managers. A great tip I saw online from Lavender was you look, you look up the companies that are hiring, or you see the companies that are hiring in the role, and then you find the hiring manager for that, use Apollo. And then they actually have a template online where you can personalize it. So that's the one to few for the companies you really want. And then the one-to-one, -one, I'm not going to send a gift card <laughs> to get a job, <laughs> but <laughs> but one-to-one -one could be, or I guess, what what would one-to-one -one be? No, I think it's like a, maybe not a, it's like a combo probably between one-to-one -one and one-to-few when you DM that hiring manager. I think it's still, I mean, from people that we've been talking to, even with Sue Keith, who was on uh, direct before the recruiter. It's a surprisingly low percentage of people that are actually even sending thank you notes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I am like so old fashioned. I send, <laughs> I send thank you notes. Even if you're a third party recruiter, I'll be sending you a thank you note because it's just, it's common decency. Like just yeah. send, it takes you five seconds and it's just, it's common decency. That's how I, I mean, not to be brutal, but yeah. no. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I feel. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's. Yeah, I was just gonna say that's the human element, right? I mean, like I even thank my, I even thank Chat GPT after it helps me with the problem. So, oh, you're I nicer think... than I am. I order it. <laughs> I order it around. Yeah, there's there's that too, but I, I try to keep that in there too because who knows? But um, <laughs> yeah, I thank Alexa, so we're we're good. <laughs> yeah. Good, there, yeah, you're good there. Always important to stay human there. Um, and I know you had talked about not only multi-threading, but also a little bit of multi-channel in that original post. So before we go anywhere, I did want to ask, I saw your landing page that you sort of created as a portfolio, as a marketer of some of your past work. Did that come into play at all in some of these later stage interviews? Oh, yeah. So actually the recruiter where I got the offer said you were the only one that had a portfolio out of the 350 applications that we got in 24 hours and had to take it off take it offline you were the only one that said a lot so and it's it's interesting and all the applications they say include your linkedin include if you want include a portfolio but it yeah that's a really good point i think i think showing that you can do things versus just having a resume, I, I highly recommend that everyone, ha at least in revenue roles, maybe not sales, but marketing and maybe CS, have a portfolio. Sales too. Can you they could probably describe for okay. our listeners a little bit about what's in your portfolio? Like maybe they're thinking, oh, I'd love to make a website, but I'm intimidated or um, I don't know what to put on it. A couple yeah. of examples of what you've got on there. Yeah, sure. So most of my stuff is from my previous role from Caspian which is a B2B podcast as a service agency. So I did, I flew, my boss just let me fly, which was the coolest. It was just the coolest experience. I actually thanked him. I said, thank you for giving me the gift to apply four years of studying B2B marketing. Cause it was, it was just amazing, but I had co-marketing initiatives on there. So I have like a, I'd have the, the webinars that I did. I had, I should probably add that I implemented Salesforce, but 
another time. <laughs> I also have product launches. Just it just basically you want to have things that, that are tactical that you've tactical that you've done. A summary. A rec- I also have a recommendation on there. My highlighted recommendation because a lot of people are people do check out your LinkedIn profile, but it's like two seconds. But if they go in your portfolio and they scroll down, they see like an awesome recommendation from LinkedIn. That I think that really sets you apart too. That's actually how I got. It's funny. It's my my former boss at Caspian. I he didn't even call my references because he saw the recommendation. He's like, yeah, I I have what I need. <laughs> I love that. I, this has been just. I think you've given our listeners so many things like they can take away and implement today. I mean, from tools to use, to your like thought process, to the actual tactics you implemented. If they could walk away before we wrap with our magic wand question, if our listeners could walk away with two to three things that you would say, do this today to stand out in this market, what would those things be? Don't hire a resume writer. Okay. That's a a don't, I think. Well, or be very, very selective with who you pick because there are a lot of scams out there. That's that's probably a, a don't, but I'll do the three do's. Um, so, like so um, tools. I think start with start with who you want to target, what you want to do, what channels do you want to use, what's your personal brand, and something a, a really good a a really good piece of advice I got is when I first started applying, someone told me. I can't tell what you stand for. I can't tell what you do. You want to position yourself to say, I am Jolie or I'm Karina or I am Taylor and this is what I can do for you. And that's what the tools help with. And also just, it's going to take time. I think just keeping in mind that it's not a, it's not a straight line. I got an offer in a month, turned it down and now I'm on phase two. And it's just, it's a cycle and it's a grind and you, and also to take breaks because mm. I, for the first month, I, my boyfriend called it bulldozing. I just, I completely ran myself to the ground applying to hundreds and hundreds of jobs and didn't, I, I have my Garmin here, but I didn't take any move breaks. I just zoned <laughs> on the computer and just like get outside, see a friend, do a hobby, like just take a, take a breath. Your applications will be there when you get back. <laughs> That is, I mean, I think those are fabulous. I love your don't. I love your do's. I think that it's such a fight or flight mentality, right? To just go ahead and you're in this position and we're scared and you just instantly start to, to, you know, go full speed, but you get burnt out that way, whether you're seeking a job or you're in a job. So that is just really, really solid advice that I think people can take away from the, from this conversation. Well, Jolie, thank you so much. I'm really impressed with just your approach to not only your personal brand, but clearly like you're going to have such success in marketing, regardless of what industry and and, and company you've already proven to be such a like self-starter. So I want to get back to your magic wand question. And you said that you, I mean, you clearly have a lot of empathy. You wanted to make this easier for others. I think just coming on the podcast today has already done that. But I do think that in addition to podcast appearances like this, where you're just giving away free advice, knowing that you have your own podcast that's focused around mental health and marketing, there's some, you know, interesting app features. Spotify is one of them where it's almost like, I think about like the old days where you could call up a radio hotline and ask for advice. They can actually send you like a voice message and that's available on Spotify. And I feel like, you could almost have a prompt where it's essentially creating an ICP framework for anybody that's in the job market where they can start to like narrow down themselves and you can just apply whether that's like five minutes of your time, whether that's a post, whether it's a podcast appearance. I feel like you've already given the formula a bit and you can just some make yourself available for however much time you felt was appropriate to distribute a month and ask them like the standard questions you've been asking yourself, turn it around to them and then give them some recommended next steps for where to use AI or where to hone in on some different tactics that it worked for you. So you're already, I feel like doing this. I feel kind of silly saying this suggestion, but I don't know. I'm curious what, how you're planning to go forward with helping others in this way. 
Yeah, that's a great question. When I talk with those 10 people, I, so when I posted that that job post on LinkedIn, I had probably about 20 people reach out. Get, I just gave my Cali link. They set time. And the first question I, so I tailored each of the approaches to what they what they were struggling with. So my first question was, what what are you running into? What issues are you running into in your job search? They tell me, and then I help them with their specific problem. And that could be they weren't getting to the first round. So I look at the resume. I'd have them screen share and look at the resume and then send mine as an example and tell them the tools. Or I can't get past the middle stages. Okay, book time my calendar. Let's do a mock interview and just help them move along the funnel. That's so kind of you. And I think that we could all just do a little bit more of that. It can be, you know, consuming and it can be draining even at times, but I think that that's a beautiful gift you're giving back to others. So Jolie, thank you so much. Please keep being you. We'll make sure to include in our show notes, the link to, to the LinkedIn post that you, you've been talking about, where you kind of outline a lot of these different steps. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners for how they can get in touch with you? What's the best way to reach you? Should they want to reach out? Yeah, just feel free to go on my LinkedIn, connect, DM. Um, my, my DMs are always open and happy to help. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jolie. We can't wait to see what happens to you next. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Direct with Karina and Taylor. If you enjoyed what you heard in today's episode, please give us a follow, maybe even a five-star review, wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you know someone that you'd like to spotlight, if you want to share your own story, visit us at motionagency.io forward slash direct. We'd love to hear from you.